Welcome to Beastars Episode 2. This anime still is not airing in the West, but that's kind of my niche nowadays as I cover anime that's not airing in the West as it's airing in Japan. And because it is airing in Japan and then being fan sub translated, we have to wait like two days, I think. So it comes out on Wednesdays in Japan, and then we usually get the drop on Fridays. Um, shout out to the people doing the subbing. You, you do a public service. I appreciate you very much for it. So if you watched my season synopsis video, you know what I think about Beatstars. I actually think it's one of the more interesting shows this season. Um, and visually, it's just very interesting. It's CG, fully CG. Uh, it, it features entirely anthropomorphized animals, which is a challenge in itself. It also has very interesting use of like visual effects, like uh, ambient occlusion, depth of field, as well as telling a sol solid, funny, murder mystery type story about animals attending a school, like kind of boarding school type prestigious school where they do all these kinds of activities and whatnot. And like the harmony and commingling between carnivores and herbivores is at the, the center of the show. Um, so without further ado, let's get started with Beastars Episode 2. Is that a stop motion animated intro? Oh my god. So they're doing CG on one hand, which is like the newest, like most cutting edge type of stuff. And on the other hand, they're doing stop motion for the intro. Oh, this studio, what are you even doing? What are you doing, Studio Orange? Do you, do you realize what you're doing? Oh. If they have sequences like this actually within the show at some point, I'm just going to fall for this show. And I, one of my friends said that um, like the show is like, it's weird that it's good because the characters look that they walked out of some kind of like furry type deal and I agree with them like the characters designs actually kind of put me off but the way and the art style and the way that they're animated is what's keeping me around at this point uh let's keep going because this looks like an absolute like banger of an opening sequence this might be my favorite animated opening of all time um because the, the music is inspired by like a cowboy bebop type style and there are stop motion animated anthropomorphic animals swing jazz dancing in front of a water fountain just take that in for a second okay if you haven't watched the show yet you have to now Whew, i feel like this this opening sequence deserves another comment um which is that weirdly netflix always makes the shows with the coolest opening sequences even though they have the skip intro button which is weird to me because this might be one of the best ops ever um, and Carolyn Tuesday had a really cool opening sequence because it is Shinichiro Watanabe and he's known for those, which was, I think, animation directed by Bahi JD and had like cuts from Jonathan DeJobe and Kondo and like all these crazy animators. And it's on Netflix where you can skip the intro. So why are they putting so much money into this if they know they're just going to skip it anyway? Uh, sticking it to the man by wasting their money on something the customers aren't even going to see. I feel that in my in my heart. OK, let's keep watching. Can we stop with the argument that CG can't look good? Because that was all CG and it looked amazing. Uh, I don't know if they're combining 2D with CG or what they're doing, but it just looks insane. Like, they were already miles and miles ahead of the pack with Land of the Lustrous, and they just took it to another level with this show. Um, now, that being said, I, 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 did want, I did say that I wasn't just going to talk about the visuals with this show, because I do think it tackles some interesting themes here. Um, one of them being that like the way he was moving his hand in that initial scene, it, it makes me feel like this is some kind of like sexual assault uh, allegory, or like he's not able to control himself, but then he's like pulling himself back. Um, uh, that, that might be like too basic or whatever, but I feel like that's the that's like the way that we're going here, specifically because he's like a big hulking wolf and she's like a tiny little rabbit. Even though they're traditionally against type, like he's not really aggressive and she's more aggressive than she seems to be. But I feel like that's what they're going for. I, we won't know until later on in the show if that's really what it is, because they did initially say it was a murder and not less like not like a, it's not like a sexual assault where the person still exists but they're just forever transformed or anything like that so we're gonna see if that's the thing that they're going with or if it's a different one but that's the vibe that i'm getting from this first uh look at it is this made by some guy who has like a vor fetish is that what it is because i feel like that's what we're getting at we're not allowed to eat meat and then like people or some people are made of meat which other people eat um interesting interesting yeah uh, maybe it is about like vegetarianism or whatever uh i don't really know uh, maybe it's 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 about one of those two things 
ah, this is so weird because like the art puts me off, but then the themes like draw me in. So I'm like stuck in this love hate relationship with the show. But then visually, it's just like so good, and the music is really cool as well. Conflict. Yeah, say what you want about Lewis, but he's actually a good actor. Like, he's pulling off this, like, very grandiose rule, role with a lot of gravitas, and he's, like, doing it pretty well, convincingly to me. Um, but what kind of stage setting do they have at a school production, given it is some kind of, like, elite boarding school where they're, like, just able to afford a whole theater department? Um, and I do think it's kind of cool that we get to see a theater department because when was the last time you saw that in an anime? And also the like dynamics are different between the characters because they all have to live in the same building. So if you do piss someone off, they might could get back at you in some way that you don't expect. Like they could, they could flip your mattress out the window like we saw in episode one happen to the bunny, right? We don't really know what could happen in that sense. So with Lugosi, like he's trying to avoid conflict at any cost. Um, that's is, is Lugosi like a reference to like Bella Lugosi who played Dracula in the old um, Dracula in, like in the forties or whatever? Is it a reference to that or is it? I don't know what it is. Um, but his like his unwillingness to like actually play role and like he tries to um, restrain himself from that and then because of that he's being like enticed by this or not may, maybe not because of that that may be entirely unrelated to this whole like predator spirit which is like trying to get the carnivores of the school to act out of character we don't really know what will happen um this show is equal parts just like very interesting and like kind of confusing to me because it's doing a lot and it's doing it pretty well and visually it's very interesting and the music is and everything is extremely well done so i know that they know what they're doing and they're not just making stuff up um, but at the same time, it's still too early to actually like hone in on what exactly they're trying to get at. So my my brain is just like a buzz with activity watching the show. So let's keep watching. <laughs> we haven't really discussed this either, but he's like actually a big wolf. And he's not bad. He may not be a big bad wolf, but they are definitely playing into that like stereotype of the big, you know, wolf guy, like the bad guy traditional thing. Um, but he's obviously against type, as we already mentioned. Uh, the show, the show is really interesting, and the way that they communicate the smells with these like aroma uh, uh, fog, um, that's also interesting. Just another one of the cool things this show does. Uh, we're only into episode two. We've already got strong characterization on Lagosi. Strong characterization on Haru and strong characterization on Adler, the like, the main or Lewis, uh, the main, the guy who's playing Adler in the play, the deer guy. Um, he's like an elite. Like, goes, he's like a background character, and Haru's just like his victim. We, we haven't really seen what happened to her since she, he clawed her arm and like left big claw chunks. Maybe it is about a war fetish at the end of the day. I don't really know. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a vor fetish. <laughs> so someone saw Zootopia and was like, mm, but what if the bunny and the fox were romantically interested in each other and there's always the power dynamic of he could eat her at any time. Ooh, this is questionable. But somehow the show is still good. And I have no idea why they chose to adapt this manga because I feel like they could have brought this visual style to anything. But they chose to do this specifically. So I, th I feel like it's still worth watching. But it's going to creep you out a little bit. That's the first time anything's looked janky in this show. That potted plant is like the first low res texture that we've seen on anything so far, which is usually the telltale sign of bad CG, and him walking through this weird parallaxed background is the first time that it's been questionable at all. Uh, this is the first immersion breaking occurrence in two episodes, and this episode is almost done too, so I'll give it to you show, you're doing a really good job with the CG, keep it up. Um, also, she's older than he is, so there's like two power dynamics. She's supposed to be like his senpai, but also he's like huge and she's tiny, and he's also a wolf and she's a bunny. There's like so many power dynamics at work here. It's 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 a little bit creepy. <laughs> This is the kind of interesting visual stuff that the show does. Ah, this is the kind of visual, interesting visual stuff that you can only do with CG, and they do it really well. So they have had already in this episode, 
like uh, they've had that little fluid simulation that shows when he's spe- smelling something. They've had that like quick car- camera move, like pan section where Lewis's Adler is imagining what it's going to look like on the stage. Um, and they've had multiple occurrences of this like overlaid transparent head looking through into a different scene, which I feel will be much harder to do because they're animating both his head and the frame that you see through his head. Um, if it was done in anything other than CG. So Studio Orange, they're like, you you think we're ahead? We're going to lap you. And that's still not even going to be the end of it. This is only episode two. Wait till like the action and stuff like that starts. I'm sure it's going to get more interesting visually for sure. Oh, it's like Twilight. That's what it is. I'm trying to pinpoint it. It's like Twilight. It's the same like power dynamic as Twilight, except he's a vampire, she's a human. He's a wolf, she's a bunny. That's the only difference. Uh, he, he, Edward says extremely creepy things in Twilight, um, just like Lugosi says in this show. That's what the reference is. Lugosi, Bella Lugosi, Dracula, Twilight. That's the connection. It took me 10, 15 minutes to figure that out. Not working as good as it used to. Okay, let's keep going. What the fuck? What is happening? Holy goddamn. Okay. Okay, I knew it was something sexual, but I wasn't expecting this quick of a transition. Um, and she's kind of just resigned herself to this. Because she's already said this. This show reminds me of Euphoria more than anything else, where there's just like all these weird things happening in like a school setting that you normally would not expect to happen. There's like murder. There's like uh, like people dealing with stuff you wouldn't expect them to be dealing with. If you haven't seen Euphoria, it's kind of like this, except not at all because it's live action. And this is an animated show about animals in a Zootopia-esque setting in an elite private boarding school uh, where some people want to eat other people. But other than that, it's the same. Uh, but okay, I guess this Usagi is now going to get it on with this wolf. Okay, should I watch this or not? I'm going to. I was right. I was right. It's some kind of weird furry vor shit. I knew it. I knew it's some weird stuff. Oh, again, so conflicted about this show. It's so weird and so cool at the same time that I can't, I don't want to watch it at all, but I also can't take my eyes away. It's like watching someone do something incredibly stupid, but very well. And you're like, I shouldn't be watching this, but somehow I'm watching this anyway. But they're doing it very, very well. Now, I can't just, I can't, I can't tell if the people at Studio Orange are really into furry or if they think that this is going to strike some niche audience with the furries. <sighs> it's clearly geared towards furries at this point because we have some kind of sexual encounter in the end of the second episode. But if you look at it as a purely human aspect, if you just treat them like humans, it takes on a different vibe in that this Usagi is just like ready to give it up at any second because. She's, like, not willing to play the type of, like, this precious, like, little girl who's extremely shy about everything. Which I like. I like that in that sense. Um, and that that's that part of it is what reminds me of Euphoria. And then Lugosi just wants to eat her. That's not weird at all. Okay. Incredibly weird show. I don't even know what to say. It's, like, it's the most interesting show of the season. But it also has, uh, like, it could be the weirdest show of the season. And also the most interesting at the same time. It's just one of those shows. You have to deal with that dynamic. Um, but that's it for Beastars episode 2 we'll see it next week um, each week I'm going to get more and more suspicious of myself for watching it again and again but there's nothing else we can do but watch and hope that it goes well so thank you for watching, like, comment, subscribe all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next video